Hello, my name is Rich Lewis. I'm building a low-cost, lightweight GPR. This is my fourth prototype. It's built for the 33 centimeter band. The first prototype I had built was for the 70 centimeter band. Note the large log periodic antennas. The antennas and the electronics go into this box and then mount to a wheelbarrow type device. The terrain of the mine doesn't really permit having a wheel type device, so we're going to look into making a handheld. This is prototype number two. It was built to experiment with several bands 13 centimeter, 23 centimeter, and 33 centimeter. This unit's shown up in a few of my videos. I spent most of last year collecting data, learning the difference between pulsing and using a continuous wave. This is the third prototype, built for the 23 centimeter band. This is what the RF section looked like. And then layered on top of it, the electronic section. And again, the current design is prototype 4 for the 33 centimeter band. Very similar to prototype 2. Here's the electronic layout and the RF layout, a little more space. Here's a block diagram of a GPR. What we're doing is mixing the transmitted signal with the received signal to produce a difference between the two. The depth a signal travels is largely dependent upon its wavelength. Low frequencies with long wavelengths go much deeper than high frequencies. Traditional GPR sends a pulse and displays depth versus distance. This implementation uses a continuous wave and displays the depth versus time. The external components are the oversized LiPo battery and the tiny SA spectrum analyzer that does most of the work for me. So we're doing some testing along what I call Hilltop Road. I'm recording what the GPR is picking up onto my tablet. For those of you that just caught that flash behind me, this is what I captured in one frame. Here's what the GPS path looks like and the responding RF. I started the GPS only on the return path. So note all the peaks of the hilltops are mirrored on the way back. So here we are recording the West Hill. The top of that hill has a whole bunch of reflections. So here's the GPS track and the corresponding RF reflections.
Here's exploded views of the various assemblies, the antenna covers, then the rest of the main assembly. Most of the electronics aren't required for the standalone handheld version that talks to your um, laptop or tablet. In this case, the electronics record all the data so it can be used autonomously with a drone. So coming in the future, we'll post the files for those of you who have a 3D printer and a laser cutter, even better. So the main cost of the Tiny SA, which goes for about $90 on Amazon, and the antennas, which a pair of those is about $50. I see that Kent Britton has redesigned the uh, log periodic, so I'll either have to fix the design for that or maybe go with the 33 centimeter Yagis that he has available. More to come. Thanks for watching.